This episode is brought to you by Brilliant. In March 2020, Riza Alzad Everin and Abraham Dincher of the University of Ontario Institute of Technology Clean Energy Research Laboratory led the construction of a unique vehicle prototype that was based on energy improvement research surrounding a rarely used energy storage technology. Using components that were readily available at any home improvement store, the team managed to construct a small test vehicle that offered an energy efficiency of as much as 90% that of a lithium-ion electric vehicle and a predicted driving range of around 140 kilometers, or about 87 miles. While the test vehicle's performance was easily exceeded by current electric vehicles, the truly remarkable innovation was in its energy medium. Everin and Dinger's vehicle operated completely on compressed air. In the early 19th century, the concept of harnessing compressed air as a power source for vehicles was first conceived. This pioneering idea was proposed by French engineer and pneumatics enthusiast George Medhurst in 1799. But it wasn't until the mid-1800s that this concept began to take shape in the form of practical compressed air vehicles. One of the first breakthroughs in this field came from French engineer Louis Makarski. In 1861, he unveiled a small-scale, compressed-air-powered locomotive. He would go on to showcase the potential for the technology at the International Exhibition in Paris six years later. As the 20th century dawned, compressed-air vehicles found their niche in specific industries. In mining operations, where the threat of explosions made internal combustion engines hazardous, compressed-air locomotives proved to be a safer alternative. Similarly, they were also used in tunnel construction projects, such as the Gothard Rail Tunnel in Switzerland. The technology was also used limitedly for urban transportation, such as the compressed air trams of Paris, that were powered by a central, city-level compressed air energy distribution system. Around the same time, several companies also explored liquefied air cars that used cryogenically liquefied air or nitrogen, though these proved to be far too costly to be practical and produced inadequate torque. While compressed air vehicles have their niche uses, these early systems simply could not match the practicality of the internal combustion engine. In fact, when compared to modern vehicles, conventional compressed air storage is significantly less efficient than an electric vehicle and actually produces more greenhouse gas emissions than a gas-powered car. When air is compressed, the volume it occupies is essentially reduced while keeping the same amount of internal energy within the smaller volume. As a result, the pressure and temperature of the air increases. These temperatures can reach as high as 650 degrees Celsius or about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit in higher pressure systems. In conventional compressed air storage systems, this heat energy is simply removed and discarded, resulting in a loss of energy in the transfer process. When the compressed air is discharged and the energy recovered, the stored compressed air will begin to cool as it expands. This is problematic as cold air is less effective in providing the necessary energy for an air motor to work efficiently. In some instances, inefficient externally powered heating is needed to bring the air back up to a suitable temperature. Conventional compressed storage in which system energy is not preserved is called a diabatic thermal process. The thermal energy losses in diabatic air compression and tankage significantly reduce capacity and round-trip efficiency. One method to dramatically improve the efficiency of compressed air storage is through an adiabatic process, where heat energy is conserved within the system. Adiabatic storage works by storing the heat energy produced by compression and returns it to the air as it expands. While theoretically it's possible to approach 100% efficiency with perfectly insulated heat storage, in practice, round-trip efficiency is closer to 60 to 70%. In practice, the technique has been more thoroughly explored for utility power storage than vehicle use, as the thermal energy storage system can be integrated into the structures that contain them. In these systems, the heated up air is cooled at intermediate steps and the removed energy is preserved in a thermal storage mass such as concrete, stone, or a fluid such as hot oil, molten salt solutions, or even water. As the compressed air is discharged from the system, it's passed through the thermal storage mass, where heat is returned back into the expanded air, which then feeds a pneumatic motor that drives a generator. 
This improves the efficiency as little or no energy has to be added at the time of expansion. Isothermal storage takes the adiabatic process a step further by tightly controlling the compression and expansion rate, such that the temperature of the air always remains constant. True isothermal compression wouldn't require thermal storage as heat would essentially be stored at ambient temperature in the surrounding environment. However, this would not work in a moving vehicle as well as be far too slow of a process to be practical. A more useful approach is known as near isothermal storage. In this process, air is compressed in very close proximity to a large thermal mass or via a thermal fluid spray that is injected into the compression chamber and collected. As the gas is compressed, the heat of compression is rapidly transferred to the thermal mass or spray, quickly stabilizing the air's temperature. On expansion, the mass or fluid returns the heat energy back to the air. Near isothermal storage systems tend to store heat at far lower temperatures than adiabatic systems as maintenance of a stabilized operating temperature is key to their efficiency. From a design perspective, this requires a highly effective heat exchange system with a large surface area, which can transfer heat continuously. Additionally, the ability to monitor and control the thermal properties within the system is critical. This is typically done through a combination of controlling the rate of compression, expansion, external cooling circuits, and even secondary energy capture. Despite its potential, isothermal compressed air storage research has been predominantly focused on large site-based systems designed for infrastructure. Everin and Dinscher's research, however, aimed to develop and explore the thermodynamic limits of near isothermal compressed air storage for commercial vehicle applications. Phase change materials are substances that undergo a phase transition between solid and liquid states at specific temperatures. During this transition, the material can absorb or release a significant amount of latent heat without undergoing a change in temperature. Everett and Dinscher investigated three different phase change materials, specifically polyethylene glycol, paraffin, and an alkane mix for heat recovery, with paraffin showing the best results. On their design, air is compressed by a simple onboard piston-based electric air compressor that routes the compressed air through a paraffin-encased heat exchanger into a standard low-pressure storage tank. As the paraffin absorbs heat from the compressed air, it liquefies, stabilizing into thermal equilibrium between the paraffin and the compressed air. As the compressed air tank is discharged to power the vehicle, the cool expanding air passes through the paraffin heat exchanger, pulling heat from it as it flows through. This warm expanded air is directed through a mixer into two air motors that provide locomotion. The air exhausted from these motors, which has now cooled from performing work, are then routed through a second heat exchanger designed to absorb heat from the surrounding environment and then to a turbine that drives a generator which is used to charge batteries for the secondary energy storage system. These batteries are used to power a positive temperature coefficient based heater to transfer heat into the paraffin, returning the leftover energy back into the system. This electrical power can also be used to drive electrical motors to enhance the torque characteristics of the drive system and its range. It is also possible to capture additional energy via solar cells using the secondary energy storage system. While this prototype pushes the thermodynamics of vehicle-based compressed air storage to new limits, the technology in vehicle use can be taken much further. Research on site-based near-isothermal storage systems for infrastructure have projected that up to four times the energy per weight or volume can be stored when compared to lithium-ion batteries. Compressed air also has the benefit of allowing for the direct conversion from mechanical energy without the need for an intermediate exchange such as through electricity. In concept, the direct storage of mechanical renewable energy such as wind turbines or hydropower into compressed air would yield a higher overall energy efficiency than current battery-based systems. Turbine-based pneumatic motors are also relatively quiet and weigh less than electric motors while tank designs lend themselves well to design flexibility and material choices. There's also much less use of metals or toxic battery chemistries, making them more sustainable and they do not require a highly specialized centralized manufacturing or even a robust electrical grid, making them potentially cheaper to manufacture and operate. There are no fire hazards associated with them 
and unlike battery storage, there is very little self-discharge. With current commercially available storage tanks, a compressed air vehicle would either use a low pressure system that operates at 10 to 20 atmospheres, or a high pressure system that operates around 240 atmospheres. These can be as simple as steel tanks to lightweight composite tanks that are immune to corrosion and are far lighter than lithium ion batteries for the same amount of stored energy. Composite tanks, in particular, are also safer as they are designed to rupture, not explode, when compromised. Tanks are also far less costly to manufacture than batteries. In fact, around 25 million ISO 11439 tanks that store compressed natural gas are already in use around the globe. The overlap with other competing technologies that require a pressure vessel also allow compressed air vehicles to draw upon research and testing done on the use of structural chassis embedded gas storage, offering even greater potential for its use. Beyond energy storage, compressed air vehicles do have another major technical hurdle to overcome, the power characteristics of an air motor. While batteries mostly maintain their voltage throughout their discharge cycle and chemical fuel tanks provide the same power densities as they're consumed, the pressure of compressed air tanks falls as air is drawn. This characteristic makes it difficult to design a motor that can produce consistent torque across a broad pressure supply range. While it is possible to overcome the shortcoming using transmissions or hybrid power as in the case of Everin and Dinger's prototype. One noteworthy approach to the problem has been developed by Australian company Engineer with their De Pietro motor. This rotary positive displacement air engine uses a cylindrical rotary piston known as a shaft driver. This piston moves with minimal friction inside a cylindrical stator, requiring only a slight pressure of 1 psi to overcome friction. The space between the stator and the rotor is divided into six expansion chambers using pivoting dividers. These dividers are designed to follow the movement of the shaft driver as it rolls around the stator wall. The cylindrical shaft driver is rotated by the air pressure acting on its outer surface, resulting in an eccentric movement. This eccentric motion in turn drives the motor shaft with the assistance of two rolling elements that are mounted on bearings attached to the shaft. The rolling motion of the shaft driver within the stator is cushioned by a thin layer of air. The timing and duration of the air intake and exhaust process are regulated by a slotted timer that is mounted to the output shaft. This timer rotates at the same speed as the motor. By altering the time during which air is allowed to enter the chamber, the motor's performance can be adjusted. A longer air inlet period permits a larger volume of air to flow into the chamber, resulting in increased torque. Conversely, a shorter inlet period limits the air supply, enhancing the efficiency of the air in performing expansion work. This strategy allows for the exchange of compressed air consumption for higher torque and power output. This design also offers instant torque at zero RPM and can be precisely controlled to give soft start and acceleration control. It is also compact and able to fit in the palm of a hand while weighing just six kilograms. The origins of the commercial compressed air car date back to 1996 when a French engineer named Guy Negre first proposed this idea. His firm Motor Development International or MDI designed and manufactured a prototype for a car entirely fueled by air. Called One Cat, the prototype was tailored for urban use and boasted a top speed of 50 kilometers an hour and a range of 200 kilometers at a price of 3,500 euros, offering advantages like minimal fuel costs, low emissions, and rapid charging. However, skepticism quickly arose from investors, regulators, and critics concerned about safety assessments, practicality, and the reliance on electricity for air compression. After overcoming these hurdles, MDI forged a partnership with Tata Motors in 2007, lending credibility to the venture. However, progress on the platform plateaued in 2012 with no further updates or commercialization plans. The passing of Guy Negre combined with the efficiency limitations of air propulsion for modern customer expectations contributed to the project's stagnation. While other industry players such as Peugeot and Veolia explored the technology, hurdles such as government support favoring electric and hybrid cars hindered broader adoption. The US-based Zero Pollution Motors also ventured into air-powered cars using a licensed MDI design called the AirPod, yet uncertainty shrouded their production timeline. 
The vehicles were even promoted on the US reality television show Shark Tank in May 2015. Despite setbacks, MDI persisted. Now led by Negra's son, in 2019 they would introduce AirPod 2, an updated model offering hybrid refueling and achieving speeds up to 80 km an hour, though production plans have still yet to be established. Despite the journey's challenges, MDI remains committed to commercializing compressed air vehicle technology, though realizing the dream of mass production still remains uncertain. It's amazing to think how century-old ideas such as compressed air energy storage keep resurfacing as solutions to today's technological challenges, thanks to new analytical perspectives. It's no secret that data analysis plays a vital role in engineering problem solving. Have you ever wanted to build upon your engineering intuition through a better understanding of how to interpret raw information? Well, there's a free and easy way to get started immediately. That's where Brilliant.org comes in. Brilliant.org is my go-to tool for diving headfirst into learning a new concept. It's a website and app built off the principle of active problem solving. Because to truly learn something, it takes more than just watching it. You have to experience it. Brilliant.org is constantly developing their courses to offer the most visual, hands-on approach possible to make mastering the key concepts behind today's technology effective and engaging. One learning experience I highly recommend is Brilliant's Exploring Data Visually course. This intuitive progression of data science lessons help you develop a solid understanding of analyzing, visualizing, and transforming data using interactive exercises, allowing you to uncover the truth and make better design decisions from raw data. With Brilliant, you learn in depth and at your own pace. It's not about memorizing or regurgitating facts. You simply pick a course you're interested in and get started. If you feel stuck or made a mistake, an explanation is always available to help you through the learning process. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days and start learning STEM today, visit brilliant.org forward slash new mind or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.